Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Dear students, welcome to the class of CS131 Discrete Structures. <coughs> uh, this is the first postment class. So uh, the topics that we've covered so far uh, before the midterm are basically uh, chapters one, predicate logic, and uh, chapters uh, four, which was based on um, uh, the uh, number theory and uh, we basically talked a bit about uh, predicate logic um, the quantifiers and uh, predicates etc and then we talked about uh, uh, some um, general principles uh, regarding the number theory uh, for example euclidean algorithm for example cryptography for example um, uh, sieve of erastrothenes and so on so uh, that's the topics that we've covered so far. Uh, I'll continue on with chapter six. Uh, we have already discussed a few of these, but I'll tr try to uh, make up a video of this and uh, upload lectures regularly. So what is counting? Chapter six is all about counting. And what is counting? Uh, remember, this is the CS131 lecture for the class of CE, computer engineering. And we'll be talking about <coughs> the counting principles in general in this particular chapter. So uh, let's give a quick intro to chapter six, and then I'll upload uh, videos based um, basically section wise uh, for, for each of these uh, chapters and the next ones. So what is counting? Um, the basic intro for chapter six counting is that um, the topic of combinatorics is being discussed in this chapter. Combinatorics is basically nothing but the study of arrangement of objects. And the arrangement of objects or uh, um, how the things are arranged in, in a particular uh, setting uh, is an important part of discrete maths. Uh, this subject was studied as long ago as the 17th century uh, when combinatorial questions arose in the study of gambling games. So the main uh, uh, motivation for studying combinatorics uh, arises from gambling. And gambling, as you know, is one of the biggest industries of the world today. It is the most richest industries of the world uh, where people go and play a lot of uh, gambles, although this is not allowed in Islam, but still uh, this is something that is very uh, common in, in uh, many European countries. And there are specific um, countries that are famous or whose whole economy is even built on gambling. For example, Monaco or Monte Carlo, <clears throat> and a lot of algorithms actually. Um, although I mean, um, gambling is not allowed, but a lot of um, algorithms have uh, risen in recent times from uh, 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 Monte Carlo, for example, the Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm that you might study maybe uh, a few years later. Um, uh, in, in third semester or maybe in the fifth semester, uh, that is actually uh, motivated from this topic. And as we go, you'll find a lot of uh, generalized principles. <clears throat> Those people who are specifically from A-levels background already understand the um, concepts of, uh, or they're, they're, they're able to apply, let's say, the concepts of uh, combinations and uh, <coughs> permutations. Uh, for FSE, they have studied it, but they uh, I, I generally feel like they are not uh, good at applying this concept. But still, um, I think in this class, I'll, I'll take it from the basics and I'll, I'll work on it. And hopefully you'll understand it. So uh, another thing when you talk about combinatorics or counting, uh, another important task is enumeration, which is uh, when you count the objects with certain properties, it is an important part of combinatorics itself. So in, in arrangement of objects, you need some, sometimes need to count the objects that uh, obey certain properties or certain characteristics. So many types of problems can basically be just solved directly by just counting objects. For example, counting is used to determine the complexity of algorithms, the number of steps that you need to um, uh, use to determine the complexity of algorithm that is done through counting. So you can just count the steps that are required. 
Counting is also required to determine whether there are enough telephone numbers or internet protocol addresses to meet a certain demand. Uh, so for example, if an area contains, uh, if a city, uh, for example, has um, 1 million residents, then you at least require uh, a seven digit uh, uh, phone number. Otherwise, uh, not each resident can have a different phone number. So these kind of examples, as you can see, require counting. And counting is all that you simply do and you can come up with how many phone numbers are required, uh, how many digits are required actually to solve a particular problem. Uh, <coughs> in mathematical biology or uh, biologic bioinformatics, as, as, as I see, um, in particular, it's the sequencing of DNA, this particular rule of combinatorics and uh, enumeration has played a very key important role. Uh, and hence, um, uh, I, I would say that uh, it has found its applications in, in various fields, uh, including uh, biology as well. So uh, wherever and whenever you're gonna talk about probabilities of events, you're going to use counting techniques. In particular, you'll be studying this course that is probability and statistics in the in the fourth semester <coughs> or even earlier, I think. And in that case, you require uh, counting techniques extensively. Okay, so let us begin with the topic of combinatorics. The basic rules of counting can solve a tremendous variety of problems. Uh, for instance, we can use these rules to enumerate the different telephone numbers possible in the world the allowable passwords on a computer system and the different orders in which the runners in the race can finish. <coughs> um, and an important combinatorial tool is the pigeonhole principle. Of course, the pigeonhole principle is something that we study in section 6.2, but here it's just uh, mentioned too, so that you are kind of aware. So the pigeonhole principle simply states that when objects are placed in boxes and there are more objects than boxes, then there is a box containing at least two objects. For example, like I said, if you have got a million people and you want to assign a six digit um, telephone number to each, then there will be at least two persons who will be sharing the same phone number. This is all what we can get from the pigeonhole principle because there are more objects than the number of boxes. So at least there is one box that contains more than uh, one object. We can also use this, in this principle to show that among a set of 15 or more students, at least three were born on the same day of the week. And this is basically called the generalized pigeonhole principle, which is the topic I think of section 6.3. We can phrase many counting problems in terms of ordered or unordered arrangement of the objects of a set with or without repetitions. So again, you can see that here, the focus is on with repetition and without repetition. And this is where, uh, the problems of uh, combinations and permutations arises. So these uh, arrangements called combinations and permutations are used in many complex problems. And uh, for instance, suppose the 100 top finishers on a competitive exam taken by 2000 students are invited to an interview. So how many different combinations are possible? And how many different permutations are possible? We encounter the possible sets of 100 students that will be invited as well as the ways in which the top 10 prizes can be awarded. Okay, so for top 10, the, of course, the, uh, the order matters. And in the case of 100 students that will be invited for interview, the order does not matter. When the order does not matter, it's basically a combination. When the order matters, it's basically a permutation. As you already know, so that's something that we're going to um, uh, get in generating all the possible arrangements of a specific kind is a particular problem that we're going to address in this particular chapter in combinatorics. So <clears throat> most of the times, this is a very interesting and important topic in computer simulations, and that is where it is of paramount importance. So in this chapter, we'll be devising algorithms to generate arrangements of various types and to count them and to come up with numbers of them for them. And uh, that's why the, uh, the topic of combinatorics or enumeration is really interesting and important to us. So uh, that's all about chapter uh, in introduction to chapter six, counting. 
And I think we'll work on, uh, in the next uh, lecture, we'll work on section 6.1, which is the basics of counting. <clears throat> so uh, take care and see you uh, in the next topic.